Today we're going to be talking about how to find the volume obtained by rotating these two curves about the line y equals 1. So essentially what we've been asked to do is find the intersection points of these two curves, y equals x squared and x equals y squared, and therefore define the region enclosed by these curves, and then imagine that that region is rotated around the line or around the axis y equals 1, and find the volume of that region. So before we go into the formula we're going to use, let's go ahead and draw a picture of this so that we understand what we're trying to do. We're going to zoom in on the area between x equals 0 and x equals 1. So we're going to draw an xy coordinate plane here and call this x equals 1 and y equals 1 and go ahead and sketch these curves so we can see what we're talking about. So before we do that, it's probably easiest to solve both of these equations in terms of y. So we have already y equals x squared. But if we solve this second equation here, x equals y squared, if we solve that for y by taking the square root of both sides, what we'll get here is y equals square root of x. And now we have two curves that are defined for y in terms of x. So if we can graph roughly y equals x squared, we know that that's just a parabola that opens upward with a vertex at 0, 0. So we can graph that. We know it has one point at 0, 0 and another point at 1, 1. And so we can graph roughly this parabola, what it would look like, maybe like this in this section. Then we have the curve y equals the square root of x, which is the opposite. We know that it also has a point at 0, 0, and it also has a point at 1, 1, but it goes the opposite way. It looks roughly like this. So we have these two curves, and we can say that this one is the square root of x, and that the other one we drew is x squared. And you can see that they intersect each other at 0, 0 and 1, 1. If we didn't know what both of these curves looked like, we could easily set these equal to each other and solve for x. So we could just say x squared is equal to square root of x, square both sides, and we get x to the fourth is equal to x. And we can see that this equation is only true when x equals 0 and x equals 1. So we would know that the intersection points of these curves are x equals 0 and x equals 1. So what we know now is that because they intersect each other at these two points, we have this region that is enclosed by um, or bounded by these two curves, and that's this region in here. What we're going to do is take this region and pretend that we rotate it around this line here. So we have the, the line y equals 1 like this, and we're going to take this region and we're going to rotate it around the line. So essentially, we're going to rotate it around like this, around the line, and that will form a volume, and we want to find the value for that volume. So let's turn now to our formula, and we have a, uh, several things going on here in our formula, but it's not as complicated as maybe it initially looks. The formula is for the volume is the integral from a to b, and a and b are our limits of integration, and they are the x values of our, of our intersection points. So we know that our curves intersect at 0, and they intersect at 1. So that means that our limits of integration are going to be from 0 to 1. And then we have pi times an AOR I've just abbreviated. Basically, it's the axis of rotation minus the outer curve minus pi times the axis of rotation minus the inner curve. And, and we're squaring both of these values, notice. So the axis of rotation is the axis that we're rotating around, the line that we're rotating around, and we know that that's y equals 1. So the value for axis of rotation here will just be 1. The outer curve is the curve that is farther away from the axis of rotation, and the inner curve is the one that's closer to the axis of rotation. So what we can see here is that our outer curve is the curve x squared. And so when we say axis of rotation minus the outer curve, the value that we're finding is the distance here from the axis of rotation to this outer curve, right? Because the axis of rotation is 1. If we wanted to find the area or the distance from the axis of rotation to the x-axis, that would just be 1 because we have the line y equals 1. So from here all the way to the x-axis here, we'd have 1. If we subtract the outer curve here, 
we'll just get the distance between the axis of rotation and this outer curve. So we have that distance. Then if we look at the axis of rotation minus the inner curve, that gives us the distance here. And so when we subtract them from one another, we get the distance between them, basically from here all the way down to here at any given time, which is the area between the curves. So that's why we have the formula set up that way. So really it's just a matter of plugging in the values that we already know. So we have the integral from zero to one because our limits of integration and our points of intersection are between the x values zero and one here. So we have that times pi minus our axis of rotation is at y equals one. So we have one minus our outer curve and we know that that's x squared. So we say x squared and part of our formula is to square that value. So we say squared minus pi times the axis of rotation one minus our inner curve, which we know to be square root of x. And we square that as well, dx. And once we have things plugged into our integral formula like this, it's just a matter of simplifying what's inside the integral and then evaluating the integral. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we can do is notice that both terms inside of our integral are multiplied by pi. So that's a constant coefficient that we can factor outside of the integral. So we'll get pi times the integral from zero to one of one minus x squared squared minus one minus square root of x squared dx. Now we just need to multiply out what's inside the integral here. So we'll get zero to one. If we take one minus x squared times one minus x squared, we'll get one minus two x squared plus x to the fourth minus, if we multiply one minus square root of x times one minus square root of x, we'll get one minus two square root of x plus square root of x times square root of x is just x and then dx. So we'll continue with our simplification and we'll get one minus two x squared plus x to the fourth. We'll distribute this negative sign. So we'll get one or minus one plus two times square root of x minus x dx. Now, before we take the integral, let's just go ahead and cancel some things and reorder our terms. So we have one minus one. Those two are gonna go away. We'll end up with pi times the integral from zero to one of, and we'll reorder our terms from highest degree to lowest degree. So x to the fourth minus two x squared minus x plus two square root of x dx. And now that we've simplified as much as possible, we can go ahead and take the integral. So we'll get pi times one fifth x to the fifth minus two thirds x cubed minus one half x squared. Keep in mind that this two times the square root of x is essentially two times x to the one half. So if we call this, if we call this two times x to the one half, we add one to the exponent. So one half plus two halves gives us three halves. So we'll get plus x to the three halves. And then we wanna divide two by three halves. Two divided by three halves is the same thing as two times two thirds, the reciprocal. So we'll get four thirds here out in front, and we're gonna be evaluating this whole thing on the range zero to one. Now remember that when we're evaluating a definite integral, we always plug in the top number here and then subtract whatever we get when we plug in the bottom number. So we'll get pi times, we'll plug in our top number first, one. So we'll get one fifth times one to the fifth power is just one fifth minus two thirds times one to the third power is just minus two thirds minus one half times one squared is just minus one half plus four thirds times one to the three halves is just plus four thirds. And then we would subtract and plug in zero, but obviously we'll get zero, 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 and zero when we plug that in. So we don't need to subtract all those zeros. We can just close it off there. Now we can either use our calculator or better yet, just go ahead and find a common denominator. We have a least common denominator here of 30. So we'll get pi times and we'll find a common denominator of 30 for each of these. So to get the first one to have a denominator of 30, we'll have to multiply by six over six. So we'll get six over 30. 
Here we'll multiply by 10 over 10 and we'll get 20 over 30. Here we'll multiply by 15 over 15 and we'll get minus 15 over 30. And here we'll multiply by 10 over 10, so we'll get plus 40 over 30. And when we take 6 minus 20 minus 15 plus 40, we'll get 11 over 30, so times 11 over 30, which means that our final answer is 11 pi over 30, which is equal to the volume. So the volume obtained by rotating this region here, all of the area inside of this region enclosed by these curves, when we take that area and we rotate it around this line, y equals 1, to get a volume, the volume is 11 pi over 30. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.